These are the times customers cross some serious boundaries on Hell's Kitchen. Hold on to your seats, cause you're about to see how Ramsey got angry at customers who decided to play waiter and chat him up directly. Let's get started with this crazy time when Ramsey went ballistic on some unsuspecting customers. And get this, it was day one of the very first season of Hell's Kitchen. Those poor folks were practically gobsmacked by his rage, wondering why on earth he was so darn furious. Why would anyone say shut the fuck up? I mean, that's like, and then he told the people back there to ignore us. It's so impolite. But hey, truth is, he's a chef trying to steer his two teams of absolute newbies towards something resembling greatness. No wonder he blew his lid. So what happened was, just an hour after they cracked the kitchen open for dinner service, nothing had even managed to leave yet. And Ralph's table was getting seriously antsy while he tried to hustle to the pass for a ballpark ETA. Finally, Ralph's table's patience had run thin. They got up and beelined to the kitchen to chew out Ramsey about the massive weight. Can you get his attention, please? Well yeah. done. Can you just shut the f up for 30 seconds? But when they stepped up to shoot the breeze with him, he shut it down real quick. What he said next really blew the customers away. Just ignore these bimbos. He told the blue team to give the cold shoulder to those bimbos. Can you believe that? Well, hey, those are his words, not mine. So the ladies slunk off back to their table, tails between their legs, though they looked pretty steamed by Ramsey's attitude. If you ask me, I think they just lost their appetites. But Ramsey wasn't done with them yet. He was so mad, he told the waiters to give them a special message, one that made sure they wouldn't approach the kitchen directly again. Service and standards are far more important than some f***ing bimbo. This totally ticked off the customer. I mean, did they know nothing about Ramsey's temper? I mean, I guess it was the first season, but Ramsey had long since been a household name at that point. But still, it is somewhat shocking that he went that hard, especially since it's their rookie round and the first ever episode of Hell's Kitchen season one. Fast forward two hours into this catastrophe, the service was tanking way worse than Ramsey had ever dreamed of. While both squads were finally dishing out their starters, the main courses were far from done and the customers were getting restless. Why don't we have our meal? We appreciate a little bit of your patience. I have no patience, Jeff. But just then, something happened. The same gals who got slapped with the bimbo label the first time around came right back to the kitchen. Mr. Chef. Yes, ladies. Can you hurt my friend's feelings? I hurt your friend's feelings. Yes. Yeah. Like, as if Ramsey wasn't already having enough of a headache with the teams by that point. One of the viewers commented about how these folks willingly signed up for the show, knowing exactly what it would be like and had the gall to think it would go off without a hitch. That's tone deafness if I've ever heard it, or uh, saw it, felt it? Anyway, another viewer added saying they're just playing it up for the cameras. I mean, like they say, actors would do anything for the gig, right? Well, we may never know what happens behind the scenes. But this time, Ramsey shot him down even harder than last time. Oh really, did I? Yeah, you did. Okay, can you tell her I meant it? Yeah, all right, I'll tell her. Ah, uh, these ladies thought Ramsey had a lot of free time on his hands to talk, but he got Jean-Philippe to take care of this next part. Jean-Philippe Souffle, can you escort these two ladies, please? Back to plastic surgery. Oh yeah, Ramsey was in no mood to take shit. He literally told Jean-Philippe to show them the door and told them to go back to the plastic surgeon's office while they're at it. Ouch. Can't say I admire the level he stooped to, but hey, it got the job done. Anyway, even though both teams got the green light to send out the main courses, a ton of customers had already walked by that point, whether they wanted to or not, I guess. I mean, there's a limit to everything, and things only get messier when you're hangry. Looking at the chaos unfold, Jean-Philippe chipped in by saying that the night was sinking faster than the Titanic. And seeing the mess, Ramsey had to shutter both kitchens. But I have to admit, I did feel bad for these two customers who were waiting patiently for so long. No, 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 I'm not getting my rare beef wellington. You are kidding me. No. No, you are kidding me. 
Now, sure, those customers had every right to be ticked off, but deep down, they should have known this was Hell's Kitchen's whole deal. I mean, there's no way Ramsey's gonna serve just anything. It's all about top-notch standards and quality. And after all, it is a reality show. Gotta expect the unexpected. But here's a question for you. Given a chance to dine in at the legendary Hell's Kitchen restaurant while an episode is being taped live, what would you do? Would you wait for hours just to taste the appetizers, or would you try and throw a fit over the wait time and try to get Ramsey to serve you early? Let me know in the comments below, and hey, let's be honest, okay? I know you're not trying to go full Karen on Ramsey, but let's keep it real. You see, not everyone's as chill as those two customers who chose to wait it out for hours. Like we saw with that last crowd of women, not everybody's got the patience of a saint. And that's exactly what went down in the very next episode. Do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Then you are less educated would, than me, so I don't would, get in my face, buddy, hey, about what kind of education. Right now, right now. So here's what happened. About two hours into the service, the red team only managed to serve eight of their main courses. Then, these customers quickly made their way down to the kitchen and had a couple of choice words for Ramsey. Hi, how are you? Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah. We've been sitting here and... Yeah. It's the red kitchen, chef. You're waiting on a Wellington and one bass, yes? Yeah. Now, how do you think Ramsey responded? I'm sure you can guess, but check this out anyway. Well, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply sorry, but right now we're about seven tables behind. Oh, wow, plot twist. He literally apologized on behalf of the whole team. But still, this dude had the audacity to say this. That doesn't do much for me. Yeah, right. Can I just say you do f all for me either? There we go. There's a proper Ramsey rebuke. Phew, I almost thought he'd gone soft on us. But what did they even expect? It's a dumb move to march up to the chef instead of dealing with the wait staff who, you know, actually run the floor. Ramsey was already at his wits end with both the red and blue team. Ramsey had a migraine coming on from the kitchen. And then these clowns strolled up to him directly? I gotta admit, Ramsey's comeback was golden there. But wait, cause he wasn't done yet. Dude was left speechless, but not speechless enough to not ask the most stupid question ever. I just don't understand why it's so difficult to serve some people their food. Are you that arrogant? You haven't got a clue what's going on behind me? Piece of cake. Piece of cake? Cooking's no walk in the park. Timing's crucial. Mess it up and you're stuck with either raw disasters or dishes that are burnt to a crisp. And we've seen both many times before. But then, there's this guy, doing absolutely nothing but soaking up the kitchen drama, and now, he wants the spotlight too. But thankfully, I'm not alone in thinking this. Tons of viewers said these customers were just here to flex in front of Ramsey and the camera. Shame the producers didn't catch him first. Now, this user absolutely understands Ramsey's frustration over impatient customers. They faced a similar experience at their own workplace. And man, ain't that the truth. It's always the people who know the least about cooking that think they know it all. It's never, not ever, a five minute affair. In Hell's Kitchen, chefs give it their all to make things from scratch. You want your food in five? Hey, it's LA. I'm sure you can find some fast food. And Ramsey knows better than anyone the real grind of what goes on behind the kitchen doors, which is why he decided to give this dude a reality check. It seems like you have a lot of amateur sous chefs. Right. Don't. Finally, your head's coming outside your arsehole. Now sit down, you fucking dick. I'll be real with you. I'm thrilled that Ramsey shut that guy down in a flash. Someone had to stick up for the chefs, and for all the yelling he does, I'm glad Ramsey stood between this guy and the teams. Hey, let the guy step into the kitchen for a minute. Let's see how well he'd do. And seriously, why the heck would he even bother coming here to eat from the hands of these so-called immature chefs if he thought so little of them? But wait, there's more. Just a minute or so later, some more lovely people came over to the kitchen. We've been waiting for food for about two hours and 45 minutes now. Gosh, is this place more dramatic than usual or what? But hey, it makes for good TV. Anyway, coming back to the customers, Ramsey once again respectfully informed them this. It's a new restaurant. Yeah, it's been a tough night. Two hours and 45 minutes? Yes. Right. Yep, he tried to be all understanding at first and let them know it was a rough night in a brand new kitchen. Yet, she was just not having any of it. It sounds like she had this whole script and kept on hammering her points no matter what he said. 
And obviously Ramsey wasn't having any of it either, and here's how he responded. Anything else? So, why don't you f*** off? And just like you guessed, the customers had to walk back to their seats in dismay. How oh, nice! He tells us to f*** off. And did you catch Jean-Philippe smirking behind that lady? Dude knew Ramsey let them off easy. It's like he's thinking, if I can't drop an F-bomb on them, I'll just let Ramsey at them for a bit. But here's where it went nuclear. Three hours into the service when, as before, the table started bailing without so much as a bite of food, a pizza rolled up to a table full of rowdy folks who started cheering. Like, seriously? That's disrespect of the highest order. Like, way to rub salt in the wound, you guys. Just bounce and go somewhere else. Not to sound like I'm simping for the slackers, but that's the point of the whole gig to unearth the creme de la creme chef, which obviously means you have to cut through the chaff first, that being shitty services like this one. Anyway, moving on, Jean-Philippe had enough with this customer after telling him multiple times that outside food isn't allowed inside Hell's Kitchen. Did you bring us we our entree? Let we me ask you. The food. No, you did not. We got the food. I, I wish your education could be as good as your, as your voice. But the dude fired back with his music doctorate from the University of Southern California, as if that meant anything at all. I have a doctorate in music from the University of Southern California. Yes, do you have a doctorate? I do have an education. Was he just mocking Jean for having a different kind of education than him? I liked how Jean handled the situation, but what happened next was so upsetting. Then you are less educated would, than me, so I don't would. get in my face. The hell was wrong with this guy? He actually put hands on Jean Philippe, poking him in the chest. But eventually, he was kicked out by one of the crew. Thank goodness. Okay, Stop. sir, you're out of here. Let's leave, please, now. And after seeing that mess, Ramsey dropped the hammer on both kitchens. A ton of viewers were super pissed at this guy for going on about his music doctorate, like it made him king of the world, having the call to drag in outside food. Like, seriously? Having a degree doesn't mean you're educated. Not on anything important, anyway. Glad he got that reality check. Maybe it'll help him out in the future. Now, do you guys remember Gordon Ramsay saying, take that giraffe back to the table, please? Well, we're gonna be talking about that moment right now. Man, where do I even begin with this one? In episode four of season three, two hours deep into service, the women, despite the trouble they faced, managed to get food to 14 of their tables. Meanwhile, the dudes, bless their hearts, only managed to serve six, and Ramsay was not happy about it. Fucking salty fucking garnish, yeah? And fucking, there you go, chef, there you go. He looks so done with both the teams, you know? But hey, so were some of the folks at the blue tables. Two seconds, please, madam. Service, please. Yes, We've been waiting for a long time. This one guest couldn't resist the urge to walk up to the hot plate. Jean-Philippe was practically on his knees begging her not to. And if Jean's telling you not to do it, you better not do it. But hey. She did it anyway. It's like when your parents tell you not to play with fire when you're a kid, but you just have to go and figure it out for yourself. No, just me. Anyway, approaching Ramsey directly is like ringing the dinner bell of trouble. And Jean-Philippe knew it. Not only is the kitchen chaotic in and of itself, but she'd also have to be dealing with Ramsey's fury. Not a good combo, but the stars aligned anyway. The moment this customer dared to approach Ramsey, her fate was sealed. Take the giraffe back to the table, please. Ramsey let loose, calling her a giraffe and physically gave her the boot, adding another layer to his already towering headache and to her embarrassment, I bet. As you can imagine, the customer wasn't exactly thrilled, firing back by calling Ramsey rude. A viewer said how people always complain about Ramsey being rude when you're not supposed to approach the window while the chefs are working. Plus, he did say two seconds, please, and she continued to interrupt. Like, read the room, lady, seriously. But this next customer was so arrogant, she treated Ramsey like a dog. Hell, at that point, I bet he was wishing it was the giraffe who was up in his face instead. But do you think Ramsey will crumble? Well, I'm sure you know the answer already, but let's check it out anyway. In season five, episode nine, each diner had to choose between the blue menu and the red menu for the evening. Both menus featured beef carpaccio, steak, and intricate potato garnishes, including Ben's palm fondant and Carol's gratin dauphinases. Giovanni led the red team's brisk beginning by preparing beef carpaccio appetizers. However, they were promptly sent back for 
lacking flavor. It has absolutely zero flavor. It's like eating a piece of paper. Giovanni realized he had forgotten to season them. Why is it always the seasoning? and Ramsey advised him to slice the beef on a seasoned plate to enhance the taste. Amidst the chaos, some customers were unfortunately subjected to observing the red diners at the same table receiving their appetizers. Meanwhile, the same red diner who had complained about her bland appetizer earlier, once again, found it under-seasoned. Totally flat, no flavor. And she just casually got up and walked over to the hot plate to address Ramsey directly, as if it was the most ordinary thing in the world. But guess what? This lady did something unbelievable. Jeff! Right! Don't whistle at me, I'm not your fucking dog, yeah? You look more like a dog than I do. No one should treat a chef like that, let alone Ramsay. But Ramsay fortunately has the balls to stand up for himself and wasted no time in reprimanding her for whistling at him. He even called her a dog too, which on paper I'm not the biggest fan of, but hey, treat Ramsay like a dog and he'll treat you like a dog. But this next customer had to have been the biggest headache Ramsey's experienced yet. And I don't say that lightly. Down in the blue kitchen, appetizers were flowing smoothly, adding a bit of pep to Tom's step, despite his slow start. We love a good second wind. But then, things took a nosedive when a guy from the men's team chimed in about his risotto, complaining that it was lacking pumpkin. Well, get ready, because Tom and Jean-Philippe were more than ready to throw down. There's no pumpkin. There's, like a There's no pumpkin. I don't want it. You don't want it, but you finished it almost. Anyway, Jean-Philippe noticed the guy had already nearly finished his risotto. He was probably just looking for some extra free food. But turns out, this customer wasn't just talking the talk. He waltzed right into the heart of the action, the kitchen, and came face to face with Ramsey himself. Why is there no pumpkin in my risotto? Oh no. The guy was craving pumpkin like it was going out of style, and Ramsey, with his trademark wit, offered to put it where the sun don't shine, and even offered him the choice of diced or whole. How accommodating. You could practically see the guy's face turning redder than a boiled lobster right then and there. Well, I'll get you more pumpkin, I'll ram it right up your fucking ass. Suitably embarrassed, he slinked back to his seat, head hanging low. Serves him right. But as if it were an ill omen, a mini fireball erupted in Tom's corner. Tom tried to blow it out, but it was all in vain. Fortunately, Gabe swooped in, shutting off the gas valve and saving the day. Whew, that was like three crises averted in like five minutes. That's gotta be a record or something. Next, we're gonna meet a customer who couldn't say a single word while still trying to act high and mighty. I think the guy may have actually been trembling with fear because of Ramsey. In the dining area, there was this one guy who was throwing a major tantrum over his undercooked dish. Is it cooked? I'm rare at best. I asked for medium, and that's rare, completely. So what does he decide to do? Well, he took matters into his own hands, went over to the hot plate, as oh so many who have come before him, clutching his plate like a trophy. Ramsey tried to help him out at first, but this guy just pointed at his dish, dead silent. Oh, talk to me, look, look at me, look, excuse me, hey. Did he just lose his voice or was he starstruck after coming this close to Ramsey? Either way, Ramsey didn't have time to waste on him. But he still took a moment to school him on not trying to hijack Jean-Philippe's job. Don't come in here acting like jumped up like some little gym bunny. Now do me a favor, that's his job, you f off. But this guy wasn't about to back down. He found his voice and managed to fire back, wondering if Ramsey was secretly planning to give him some food poisoning free of charge. You trying to poison Jake, me? Poison you? What a f dick. It's beef, you fing idiot. Eat tart off. However, Ramsey didn't hold back and straight up called the guy a jerk and then threw in a witty comment about craving beef tartare. Can't say I get it, but hey, whatever works, right? Now, it looks like someone was prepared for a fight because he retorted with the most awful thing ever. It's low grade beef. Come out shave you. As he headed back to his table, Ramsey couldn't resist one last jab. Well, this is why I love this show. Stand strong, buddy. Stand nice and strong. Push your arms out. You look like a fucking quail. I've saved the best for last, as is tradition. And trust me, sticking around till now is gonna be totally worth it. Pinky promise. Brace yourselves, cause this episode right here, it's an absolutely legendary moment in Hell's Kitchen history. We're talking about a customer who basically turned the whole kitchen upside down. Literally or metaphorically. Well, just wait and see. 
In the midst of the service, which had been going on for a solid couple of hours, most of the folks already had their main courses. Seems normal so far, right? But then there was this one lady, sitting tight and waiting for her food. Well, her frustration was like a ticking time bomb. So she eventually just said, screw it, and barged into the kitchen like she owned the place, ready to get some answers straight from Ramsey himself. Right now, I just, I just, I just asked for 30 seconds, if you can just be so kind, I'm in the middle of serving a table. Now, Ramsey, you know how he's got that razor sharp wit, so he hit her with this. Would you mind taking your breath off my hot plate? It's like everything came to a halt immediately. The waiters, the diners, even the kitchen. All eyes were on her and Ramsey. But this lady wasn't in a joking mood. Nah, she had fire in her eyes and decided to throw down in a way nobody saw coming. How can I serve food with those fucking things there? Chicken. Frustration and anger, she literally flipped an entire table that was stacked with food. Crash, bang, splatter. That whole scene tumbled down right at Ramsey's feet. And the aim was to get your food faster, huh? Shit hit the fan real quick, and Ramsey, being the responsible captain of the ship, hit the panic button and called in the cavalry. Yeah, that's right, security. And I'm sure you can guess what happened next. A bunch of guys swooped right in and showed her the door. Good riddance. So there you have it. Hell's Kitchen is a wild ride at the best of times, but usually for the chefs. This is the worst opening night in the history of Hell's Kitchen. Get out! Just like what happened in this dinner service, which had earned the reputation for being one of the worst in the show's recent history. Now, this was one of those services when most of the contestants had made so many grave mistakes that Ramsey only had one thing to ask. Was that a wedding or was that a funeral tonight? And the only thing missing was a eulogy for their taste buds. Yep, this is season 21, but this was a wedding service, and a very special one at that, since it was for season 20 winner Trenton and his fiance, Macy. Both teams had to impress the head table, and the guys were up first. When the first order came in, there was a bit of a tiff between Abe and Billy. You see, it was Billy's job to sear the scallops, but Abe kind of took over, and Billy wasn't thrilled about it. But let Abe do his thing to get the guys off to a strong start. But was it though? Well, take a look at this and you can be the judge. Just touch him in the middle. It's nice cold. Come on, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, the scallops were colder than the bride's feet. Ramsey naturally asked Billy why he wasn't cooking his dish. And well, that didn't sit well with Billy, who felt like Abe was cramping his style. He's like, no, no, you never worked fish yet. What the f are you talking about? I've worked fish my whole life. About 40 minutes into the service, Billy thought he had the timing on the scallops down. I mean, he just couldn't mess it up this time. It was a big night. But this is what happened. It's wrong! Sorry, Chef. This is ridiculous! At this point, I'm not sure if Chef Trenton and Macy were loving the romantic vibe. You see, the fish station was dragging the blue team down, and the men were clearly frustrated. Everything got messier when Ramsey saw Billy's overcooked redo and decided to put both Billy and Cheyenne in the hot seat. Why are they black? Can you show me how to sew this column now, yes, please? Yes. Now, it's his dish. The service was spiraling out of control, and Ramsey asked Cheyenne to take over the cooking for the scallops, which was a bit embarrassing for Billy because, you know, he thought he knew how to cook scallops. But thanks to Cheyenne's skills, the first order from the blue kitchen finally went out. As for the entrees, the woman started communicating better, but Ramsey noticed a bit of an issue. Stop for two seconds, stop. Can anyone tell me what's wrong with this? Way too many collard greens. Ramsey ordered them to add the secret ingredient they were all missing. Now, this one was a game changer. Wondering what it could have possibly been? Uh, check this out. And I asked you to cook for some love, yes? Yes, yes, chef. Come on, it's like a roadside cafe, this. Guys? No. Love. All you have to do is cook it with love. Uh, if only it were that simple. Anyway, when the ladies sent up their entrees, Ramsey cut into the chicken. And guess what? This 
fucking rare inside. Yes, in sir. sickness and health, they won't even last a f***ing week married. Ah, it was raw. Much to the shock of nobody. Daphne was wondering why Mindy wasn't helping out Summer and was sort of letting Summer take the blame. But thankfully, the refire got the green light from Ramsey. Now, it had been a solid hour and a half into service, and Ramsey decided to gather both teams to get those main table orders ready. But there was a catch. Perfect. How long? Six minutes. Six minutes. Let's go. Six minutes. Talk about pressure. Alyssa was all about making sure Trenton and Macy were happy, but Ramsey noticed something was off. Again. Why aren't there any colored greens on? Yeah. How's that possible? Yeah, I got it yet. I got it. I got it. I Alyssa hadn't even fired up her colored greens yet, and this made Cheyenne feel like Alyssa wasn't really in the game. Um, yeah, the feeling was mutual from the viewer side too, at least for me. Over in the blue kitchen, Brett knew how crucial nailing the main table was, but somehow he managed to serve up an ice cold steak. Oops. On the second try, Abe was feeling the heat, hoping they could bounce back. But the chicken turned out raw, and that was the last straw for Ramsey. He booted the guys out of the kitchen. You, 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 you. Get out! And would you look at Ramsey? He was so dumb with the drama. The f was that? Embarrassing, chef. Unacceptable, chef. A disgrace! You should be embarrassed. We are, chef. I am, chef. On the other hand, the red team wasn't that behind in the race. They were working hard on their part of the head table, determined not to mess it up. But then, Mindy walked up with a cold steak. And they had to shove it right back in the oven. And to make matters worse, Ramsey discovered some more raw chicken. Safe to say, he was pretty frustrated, especially considering Alyssa's collard greens mishap, Summer's chicken struggles, and Mindy's cold steaks. Oh my good God. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. I can't believe that it was someone's wedding, and they were serving stuff like this. And when they tried again, the chicken passed, but the steak ended up overcooked. Ramsey had enough, and kicked the women out of the kitchen, too. With both teams out of the kitchen, the sous chefs had to step in and save the day, cooking up those main table orders. Luckily, the reception managed to end on a high note as Trenton and Macy got to enjoy their cake. One of their vows must have been to never renew their vows in Hell's Kitchen, which reminds me of the service during sous chef Andy's wedding. Ramsey was in real emotional pain after what he was put through that day. Jackie and Joe fucked up their respective risottos, Danny didn't know how to properly sear scallops, leading to Ramsey himself needing to take over. Hassan sent up raw pink chicken not once but twice, and Chad, the one with prior experience in Michelin star restaurants, well, his salmon was undercooked, his scallops overcooked. I couldn't even look Andy in the eyes. I was that fucking embarrassed. Ah. <sighs> Which wedding service do you think was worse? Let me know in the comments below. But I'm done with weddings, so let's head over to season 9, where the American Classics Challenge turned into chaos. Wolfgang Puck only gave a thumbs up to 3 out of the 10 dishes, and even for those, he wasn't exactly throwing compliments around left and right. The one exception was Natalie's salmon salad, but two chefs really stood out, but not for good reason. First up, is Tommy. He presented a Japanese soy caramel burger, and right from the first glance, it left a lot to be desired. The visual appeal was utterly lacking. His burger looked like a lifeless wasteland. You know, show me your hand. Look how colorful that looks. That's how I like my burgers to look too. See, I'm not crazy, right? Right? Well, it was ugly, no matter how you slice it. And the taste was pretty mad. Instead of delivering that wow factor like the challenge demanded, Tommy's burger fell flat. And the other chef was Jonathan. Now, at least this dude was self-aware because he was not confident. Like, he was hesitant to even bring it up. I'm not taking it up. Come on, guys. I'm not taking it up. Pick it up, bro. For God's sake, come on. And yeah, he was right. Disclaimer. No Italians were harmed during the making of Jonathan's flatbread pizza. At least, that's what he thought it was. Where did you see a pizza like this? I haven't, sure, honestly. Nowhere! 
Not even my dog would have it. I mean, give me my pepperoni, mushroom, and extra cheese, man. Not that gourmet shit. I mean, if you go to Italy, they arrest you for that, you know that. But here's where it gets even more absurd. When Jonathan tried to defend his creation, he argued that he had zero say in the creative process. But Tommy wasn't having any of it, and believed that it could have been properly cooked. I'm standing here looking like an ass because um, I had no say so in the pizza. Basically, I just rolled the dough out. There was no redemption in sight. Ramsey sent it back, refusing to let Wolfgang Puck even taste it. I don't know. If it were me, I wouldn't have even let him see it. Up next, Royce's shitty lobster dish comes to mind. He was pretty confident about it. After he whipped up what he thought would be a fantastic lobster dish, he took a little taste. I feel great. I'm confident in myself, and I know the judges are gonna like my dish. Royce was the last one from the blue team to have his dish judged, and he was going head to head with Christina. He'd gone all out, making a whole poached lobster infused with saffron and thyme. Disaster struck when Douglas Keane, with a look of disgust, discovered a long hair in Royce's dish. That's gross. It's not curly, so I'm pretty happy about that. I don't even want to know which part of his body it came from. But I'll tell you one thing, it's disgusting. You can only imagine the collective cringe in the room, and Clemenza didn't hold back and asked the million dollar question. You gotta be kidding me, man. You give a chef who has two Michelin stars a plate with a piece of hair on it. Ramsey grilled Royce about that rogue hair in the dish, and he claimed to have absolutely no clue how it got there. It's bigger than Roshni. But wait, there's more. Michael Chimarusti discovered that the lobster still had something on. You know, there's a part of the lobster, too, that you should always remove. The shit sack. Come on, man. In the end, Royce's dish earned him a less than stellar three stars, and I even think that was generous. Yep, that hair and the unexpected lobster surprise didn't do him any favors. Uh, moving on, we have Paulie's dish from the ingredient crossword challenge in season 16. He decided to go for something more on the technical side and came up with a dish featuring crab stuffed okra. He was the first one from the blue team to present this creation to the judges. But oh boy, it did not go well. Ramsey took one look at the plate and Paulie immediately came under fire for that okra of his being improperly prepared and Raw. Okra, badly prepared. Uh, raw, puree slimy. The puree didn't do him any favors either with how slimy it was. And when he took a bite of the ribeye, oh man. And that's the worst bastardization of a ribeye I've seen uh, this year. Paulie only managed to score one point, and needless to say, he was pretty ticked off. He wasn't used to being at the bottom of the pack but Ramsey wasn't happy with him pouting and made sure to give him a stern warning. So if it all, give me raw okra and expect me to kiss your ass. Absolutely you. not. I'm dreaming. Let's get that right. And then Polly walked straight into it again. When Ramsey asked if there was anything, absolutely anything redeeming about the dish, this is what he said. Yeah, the plate you served it on. No, off. Ouch. Was that the best he could come up with? Anyway, Danny, the winner of Hell's Kitchen Season 5, had a bit of a rocky start. His dish of choice was mahi-mahi with grilled bananas, but oh boy, it didn't go as planned. Ramsey didn't hold back, and he didn't mince his words either. He took one look at Danny's dish and quipped that Danny must have gone completely bananas while making it. Yeah, word for word, hear it for yourselves. It looks like you've gone slightly bananas. Danny had a hunch that Ramsey was trying to get a rise out of him, with him calling it hideous. When Ramsey asked him where the idea for this dish came from, Danny shot back. I just pulled it out of my ass, sir. Put it back in there, because it sucks. As for me, I would have no problem tasting Danny's dish, but I can't say the same for this next one. Who's this? Uh, JP's. That would be JP's. In the signature dish challenge, he was quick to the draw and finished cooking a whole 20 minutes before the clock ran out. When Ramsey got wind of this, he wasn't impressed. Even though JP tried to assure Ramsey that he could keep the dish warm, Ramsey wasn't buying it. He warned JP that by the time it was served, it would probably be overcooked, so JP reluctantly decided to start over. He was the second contestant from the blue team to have his dish judged, facing off against Sade. 
Before even taking a bite, he questioned JP about whether he had indeed cooked a whole new dish after finishing the first one so early. JP admitted that he had indeed started from scratch. With that revelation in mind, JP presented a Boston baked haddock with fingerling potatoes, haricot vert, and lemon beurre blanc sauce. Unfortunately, Ramsey wasn't in a forgiving mood. <laughs> Is solid. The fish, dry. The potatoes, hard. And the lemon component was something straight out of the 1970s. I'm ready to win. Yeah, sorry, buddy. I'm struggling whether to let you come to Hell's Kitchen or just send you home. Ramsey didn't stop there. He reminded JP that he was the only chef who had to cook his dish twice, a clear mark against him. And then Ramsey dropped a bombshell suggesting he might just send JP home on the spot. And in the end, he scored a meager one out of five for his dish. Now, Ramsey doesn't care about your experience. And in season seven, he went to great lengths to prove it. So this woman bravely revealed that she had never worked in a restaurant before and had been a stay-at-home mom. Ramsey called her down to present her dish, which happened to be veal scallopini with spinach. Now, Ramsey, known for his no-nonsense approach, couldn't help but comment on the dish's appearance. Apart from it looking like baby vomit, what is that? But then came the taste test, and Ramsay surprised everyone by declaring that it was actually delicious. Ramsay, in a rare moment of warmth, told her not to be so jittery, but she couldn't help but admit that she found him a bit scary. Moments later, Ramsay leaned in and took it up a notch, turning up the heat in Hell's Kitchen by shocking absolutely everybody. I wanted to be first. <laughs> Don't worry, that was his wife, Tana. But you get his point, right? When Salvatore, with 20 years of experience, presented his bucatini alla matriciana, he proved Ramsey's point. Experience doesn't matter. Bucatina matriciana. Are you made the bucatini? You? I didn't make chef. He was genuinely upset that an Italian chef couldn't be bothered to make his own pasta. I mean, don't serve Ramsay pre-made food. And definitely don't serve Ramsay undercooked pre-made food like our buddy Salvatore did here. As if that wasn't enough, he ended up losing the round to Maria. For good reason. While Salvatore was humble about it, this next chef was the opposite. She was ready, pitchforks and all, to defend her pre-made crap sauce. I don't think there's anything wrong with canned sauce. You're not gonna be making your sauce from scratch all the time. Monique in season 14 was the final contestant from the red team to have her dish evaluated by Ramsey, and she faced off against Brett. She proudly presented Moe's Pasta. However, things took a sudden nosedive when Ramsey asked her a crucial question about her dish, how she made the marinara sauce. Monique's response was far from what Ramsey had hoped for. She admitted that she used sauce from a jar, which led to an instant and dramatic reaction from Ramsey. Naturally, he spat out his bite in utter disbelief, but Monique wasn't convinced. No, if you wanted it, you should have just told me. I would have did it. You came oh, to the kitchen. I've got to tell you what I want. Yes. Gosh, the audacity. Monique's attempt to justify her choice didn't sit well with anyone, not even her fellow contestants. She argued that Ramsey should have explicitly told her not to use pre-made sauce, which only managed to annoy everyone around even further. Monique's dish earned her a mere one point, a clear sign that taking shortcuts in the kitchen, especially in a competition like this, doesn't lead to success. Now, in season 18, during the Creative Desserts Challenge, Trev was feeling pretty confident about his healthy dessert creation. He was convinced that it would be a hit. I've made this dessert a bunch of times. Everybody loves it. Hey, let's go up there and give her a kiss. Avocado kisses. Yeah, that's what he named the dish. Now, despite his confidence, the feedback he received was far from what he expected. Valerie brutally criticized the dish, describing it as a mishmash of everything she despised about combining healthy eating with desserts. But don't let my softball version fool you. The judge was way harsher. Listen to this. This is everything that I dislike about healthful eating getting integrated with dessert. You can tell that Ramsey was trying not to laugh when Chef Valerie was ripping Trev a new one. 
Poor Trev. You can't deny that he got hit real hard there. This is like one of my nightmares where I think that I make something amazing. They just tear it to shreds and tell me I'm fucking horrible at my job. Oh, and Chef Valerie wasn't done yet. It tastes like a bush. <laughs> I want to forget this. Gotta be one of the funniest insults by a guest judge. She really hated the dish, huh? So who among these customers pissed you off the most? Also, what do you think about Ramsey's way of handling things? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you can think of more times that customers went crazy, don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free, where we can make a whole list of the craziest customer showdowns ever on Hell's Kitchen. And who knows, it might make it into a follow-up video one day. Also, guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.